Hi there, I'm Adam Burton, and I'm the pastor at Central Baptist Church in Maysville, Kentucky. Thank you for tuning into my online Bible study. It's from the Gospel Project. We are live every Thursday night to study God's Word. This week's Bible study is titled, God's Protection Sustains His People. We will see that God advances His kingdom through His people's faith in Him, including when their faithfulness leads them into trials. To let you know where we are going in our study, here are the three points. One, God's servant faithfully prays to the Lord. Two, God's servant faithfully relies on the Lord for rescue. And three, God uses His servant to advance His kingdom. We will get to our Bible study in just a moment. Before we do, one of the great things about our online Bible study is that we can engage in conversation. So as you watch, let me know what comments or questions you have. Let us know what sticks out to you in this study. Lastly, we would love to connect with you on all of the socials. We are active on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Just search for CBC Maysville. Stay tuned to the end for an important message about how you can go deeper into God's Word. Okay, let's get to our online Bible study. In 1653, Bostrode Whitlock traveled to Sweden as an ambassador from England on behalf of Oliver Cromwell. He had the difficult job of representing his country that was still dealing with the fallout of a civil war and tensions in the government and the church. The night before his departure, Whitlock anxiously paced the floor when a trusted servant led in this exchange. Pray, sir, do you not think that God governed the world very well before you came into it? Undoubtedly. And pray, sir, do you not think that he will govern it quite as well when you are gone out of it? Certainly. Then, sir, pr pray, excuse me, but do you not think that you may trust him to govern it quite as well as long as you live? Gripped by uh, the correction, Whitlock went to bed and soon was fast asleep. Resting in God's protection of His people is as important today as ever before. The Lord is advancing His kingdom, and He is quite capable of handling whatever lies ahead. Even our trials are a tool in God's sovereign hand to accomplish His work. God's peace is available to us, but it will require great faith. How does our appetite for control forfeit the peace of God in our lives? Well, we think too highly of ourselves and believe the mission success is, uh, believe mission success depends upon our ability. You know, the peace of God is available only through faith in God to accomplish His will. Or our desire for control threatens our relationships with others, leading to tension and fighting. Through a remarkable demonstration of faith, Daniel not only received God's protection, but also magnified God's superiority over all false gods. This session reminds us that the world systems of power are subservient to God's kingdom. Consequently, our primary allegiance, no matter the price, must be to the kingdom of God. Our first point is God's servant faithfully prays to the Lord. God's servant faithfully prays to the Lord. Read with me Daniel chapter 6, verses 6 through 10. Then these high officials and satraps came by agreement to the king and said to him, O King Darius, live forever. All the high officials of the kingdom, the prefects and the satraps, the counselors and the governors, are agreed that the king should establish an ordinance and enforce an injunction, that whoever makes petition to any god or man for thirty days except to you, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions. Now, O king, establish the injunction and sign the document so that it cannot be changed according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which cannot be revoked. Therefore, King Darius signed the document and injunction. When Daniel knew that the document had been signed, he went to his house where he had windows in his upper chamber open toward Jerusalem. He got down on his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he had done previously. Things were difficult for Daniel in exile. Though he enjoyed the esteem of each monarch he served, the officials serving with and below him resented his favor with King Darius. These wicked men conspired to discredit Daniel, 
but his impeccable integrity exposed no flaws. So they manipulated Darius to entrap him. Still, Daniel kept himself anchored to the kingdom of heaven through his daily petitions. Listen to this quote. Our lack of spiritual power in Christianity today is not due to the sermons we preach or the songs we sing. Rather, it is due to our lack of prayer. We do not pray like it matters. Daniel left his enemies no recourse but to use his faith against him, and his consistency in prayer to the Lord gave them the blueprint. They devised a plan, more political than religious, to make King Darius the focal recipient of all prayers for 30 days, knowing Daniel would defy the edict. The first prayer Daniel offered to his God would be his ticket to the lion's den. You know, we might be tempted to see Daniel's commitment as a bit radical and unnecessary. I mean, couldn't he kneel in his heart to pray while keeping his body straight? I mean, if God knows our hearts, why was this conscious, visible defiance necessary? You know, maintaining his love for and dependence upon the Lord must have been difficult while living in a foreign land. But Daniel knew God's prescribed remedy for their time in exile. Obeying the command of Solomon, Daniel fixed his heart on the Lord and prayed toward Jerusalem for the restoration of Israel. Listen to this essential doctrine, sin's effects in the world. Sin does not only impact our relationship with God, it also is the root of our broken relationships with the people around us. Human sinfulness is the reason the creation groans in anticipation for redemption and deliverance from its bondage to evil powers. Sin has infected and redirected the social structures of society, leading to injustice and oppression. The distorting effects of sin are visible all around us, but the good news of the gospel is that the battle against these powers will be won through the work of Christ. Daniel resolved to obey God rather than men. His refusal to comply with the king's command was not an aggressive act of rebellion, but a deep devotion to God's higher law instead. So too, as a Christian's commitment to Christ must always take precedence. In a world that is subject to Satan's influence, followers of Christ must choose to go against the currents of compromise, just like the apostles of Christ, who could not stop speaking about the resurrected Jesus. Christians should work diligently to be good citizens who honor governmental leaders and laws, but our commitment to Christ must always take precedence. Think about this. What are some ways it is difficult to be true to Scripture in our context? Well, standing up for God's design for sex versus the world's sexual ethic leads to rejection in our culture. Sharing the gospel for others to hear and believe is often considered taboo. Our love for enemies in this world requires the miraculous work of faith and submission to the Holy Spirit in us. You know, maintaining his faith while in exile was surely challenging for Daniel, yet he found the strength to do so through his prayer life. In a similar way, believers around the world today continue to find the courage to walk with God in their prayer closets. No amount amount of adversity or resistance should decrease our enthusiasm for praying and then obeying the true King of heaven and earth. Our second point is God's servant faithfully relies on the Lord for rescue. God's servant faithfully relies on the Lord for rescue. Read with me Daniel chapter 6 verses 13 through 23. Then they answered and said before the king, Daniel, who is one of the exiles from Judah, pays no attention to you, O king, or the injunction you have signed, but makes his petition three times a day. Then the king, when he heard these words, was much distressed and set his mind to deliver Daniel, and he labored till the sun went down to rescue him. Then these men came by agreement to the king and said to the king, Know, O king, that it is a law of the Medes and Persians, that no injunction or ordinance that the king establishes can be changed. Then the king commanded, and Daniel was brought and cast into the den of lions. The king declared to Daniel, May your God, whom you serve continually, deliver you. And a stone was brought and laid on the mouth of the den. And the king sealed it with his own signet and with the signet of his lords, that nothing might be changed concerning Daniel. Then the king went to his palace and spent the night fasting. 
no diversions were brought to him, and sleep fled from him. Then at break of day, the king arose and went in haste to the den of lions. As he came near the den where Daniel was, he cried out in a tone of anguish. The king declared to Daniel, O oh, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God, whom you serve continually, been able to deliver you from the lions? Then Daniel said to the king, O oh, king, live forever. My God sent his angel and shut the lions' mouths, and they have not harmed me, because I was found blameless before him. And also before you, O king, I have done no harm. Then the king was exceedingly glad, and commanded that Daniel be taken out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den, den, and no kind of harm was found on him, because he had trusted in his God. After placing his favorite Hebrew in the lion's den, Darius could not eat or sleep that night. Daniel, however, had a much different experience. He had prayed willingly despite the hasty law that threatened him, and he enjoyed a peaceful evening despite his feline companion. The Lord protected him and spared his life. The story of Daniel's peace and his circumstances is reminiscent of the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who were willing to obey God even if it cost them their lives. And just as the Hebrews were called out of the fire and found to be unsinged, Daniel was called out of the lion's den and was found to be unscathed. We celebrate Daniel's survival, and, and rightly so, but how should we view God's protection of his people when their outcomes are less desirable? Does God remove every threat we face? Does He always free us from our prisons of adversity? Are we foolish to trust God through the worst circumstances? A different result in the lion's den would not have been a failure by Yahweh. Daniel knew what the Lord could do, but he was at peace no matter what his God chose to do. His obedience was settled whether he lived or died. We do not obey God to avoid death. We obey Him without fear because we understand death does not have the last word. Whether God rescues us from our earthly dilemmas or He walks through them with us to increase our eternal reward, He actively and compassionately protects His own. We can trust God to do what is best for us even if it is not immediately obvious how He will do it. Like Daniel, Jesus lived with a passion to obey his heavenly Father without conditions. Unlike Daniel, however, our Savior tasted death by the way of the cross before he experienced God's rescue. For three days, it seemed as if hell's roaring lion had devoured the Son of God. Yet through Christ's resurrection from the dead, God made it impossible for all who call upon Jesus' name to be a part of God's kingdom. God the Father rescued him just as he promises to save us when we believe on Jesus' name. Our last point is God uses his servant to advance his kingdom. God uses his servant to advance his kingdom. Read with me Daniel chapter 6 verses 25 through 27. Then King Darius wrote to all the peoples, nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth, Peace be multiplied to you. I make a decree that in all my royal dominion, people are to tremble and fear before the God of Daniel, for he is the living God, enduring forever. His kingdom shall never be destroyed, and his dominion shall be to the end. He delivers and rescues. He works signs and wonders in heaven and on earth. He who has saved Daniel from the power of the lions. You know, through the opportunity afforded by Daniel's faithfulness, God revealed to a pagan king his strength, eternality, and sovereignty. Certainly, the Lord's character would not have been in jeopardy had Daniel capitulated to the evil around him, but his divine attributes may have remained hidden for those around Daniel, apart from his steady endurance through an extremely frightening trial. You know, today, I mean, we have similar opportunities to Daniel's when adversity interrupts our lives. You know, obviously, mir miraculous intervention can still draw attention of unbelievers. If God spares your life, heals your body, or reorders your steps, people might praise the Lord if you point them back to Him. But most of our stories are not as dramatic as Daniel's. 
Yet even when God calls us to endure through tragedy, rather than removing it from us, His glory comes bursting forth when our faith is unshakable. And this might actually communicate more than we are delivered. Each heartbreaking burden we face, whether it is removed in short order or weathered with an unwavering commitment to Christ, presents unique opportunities to glorify our Savior. What was the significance of Daniel's life? The kingdom of heaven would march forward with or without this godly man, yet the lifelong commitment of this individual resulted in repeated acknowledgments throughout the known world that Yahweh is the true God. Despite his pagan surroundings, Daniel pointed both Jews and Gentiles to the only kingdom that really matters. And both Jews and Gentiles will benefit from this kingdom for all eternity through the coming of the Messiah. God advanced his agenda of redeeming the whole world through the means of Daniel's life. It is likely that Daniel's favor with the kings he served over his lifetime positioned the Jews for their future return home to Jerusalem. Perhaps Daniel had the opportunity to put this part of God's plan in Cyrus, the the Persian's ear. In ways that Daniel never imagined, God used his faithful commitment to the Lord for the benefit of Jews and Gentiles alike. By God's grace, our spiritual dedication and obedience to Him will result in that which is exceedingly abundantly above anything we could ever think of or ask for. You know, returning to their home after exile was important for Jews living outside of the promised land during this period. But the ramifications of their restoration went beyond personal satisfaction. Returning to Jerusalem ultimately signaled that God's plan to send the Messiah was progressing as He promised. Years later, Jesus would be born in Bethlehem, just outside their capital city. Think about this. What priorities should we have so our lives have eternal significance for the sake of the Messiah and His kingdom? Well, we should make the glory of our Creator God at the pray in the praise of His Son, our Savior Jesus, our highest priority. Under the mission to share the gospel throughout the world, right? Spirit led and spirit empowered obedience from a joyful heart of faith. And obedience to the Word of God, even if it costs us our own lives. The presence of trials is not an indicator that God has abandoned us. To the contrary, the Lord often uses our adversaries to demonstrate His power and advance His redemptive agenda as He, work, his, he works through us. Our sustained reliance upon Christ is a powerful tool in the hand of our Savior, pointing others to Christ and becoming more like Christ, who faithfully obeyed the Father even to death, are just two of the potential results that accompany every problem we face. Christians are to work hard and live quiet lives while on mission for the gospel, even as they obey the governing authorities God has placed over them. We cannot, however, disobey the Lord. His commands must take precedence. He must remember that our primary citizenship is in heaven with Jesus, our Savior King. Remember, God is often accomplishing much more through your character and obedience than you can know, but which eternity will reveal. Because we are citizens of the kingdom of God, through Christ we obey God above the world's governments and, if necessary, engage in civil disobedience to advance the gospel. Here are some ways for you to apply God's word to your life. How do you need to lay down your life in service to the Lord, who laid down for His for the salvation from sin and death? In what ways can your church support each other as you live distinct from the fallen culture around you? What radical commitment in your life might give you an opportunity to share your faith? Listen to this quote. While Daniel suffered but lived, our Lord died a terrible death, as did many Christians who were thrown into the lions. And as many do today, deliverance may not, may or may not come in this life. We have the advantage over Daniel in that we know the Messiah has come and conquered death for us. Pray with me. Father, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one so that we might display the goodness of your kingdom. We do not deserve to belong in your kingdom, but thanks to your son Jesus, the true king, we have been brought into the kingdom of light 
through the Spirit of Christ, enable us to live as faithful citizens of your kingdom, even though it might cost us our lives. Amen. Thank you for watching this week's Bible study. Remember that God advances His kingdom through His people's faith in Him, including when their faithfulness leads them into trials. You know, Daniel faithfully trusted and obeyed God, even, to, even at risk of his life. God rescued Daniel from death and used him to advance his kingdom. Like Daniel, Jesus faithfully trusted and obeyed God. But unlike Daniel, Jesus was not spared from death. Jesus died and was resurrected to establish the kingdom of God. Connect with me if you would like to know how Jesus can change your life forever. Would you like to dig even deeper into this week's Bible study? Join our online Bible study Facebook group. To get a short study each day, you can find us at facebook.com slash groups slash OBS Central. That's facebook.com slash groups slash OBS Central. Well, if you enjoyed tonight's Bible study, would you share it with your friends? Lord willing, I will see you next Thursday for our online Bible study. God bless.